This was my mom's favorite cake to make. She could whip up a jelly roll in no time for the family of eight. So we always had a dessert, even if there were hardly any ingredients in the house. It's not difficult to make. There's just a few little secrets that you have to know. We're gonna get right into it. Um, it's six egg yolks and six egg whites. You have to separate the eggs. It's very important. Put it right into the mixing bowl. And now notice the mixer is fitted with a wire whisk. Break up the egg yolks a little bit. Add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. And just add the sugar slowly. You don't have to do it too quickly. And one and a half teaspoons of just the best quality vanilla that you can find. And a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Now I wanted to also point out, this is the cookie sheet. The cookie sheet is buttered completely. Then a piece of parchment is fitted exactly in the bottom, then buttered again, and then lightly floured. And shake out, make sure you bang out any excess flour like that. So that is ready to go. So now we need three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. Do you ever use cake flour for this recipe? Uh, oh, my mom always used cake flour, but instead of using cake flour, we're going to use half all-purpose unbleached and half cornstarch, which makes even a lighter flour than the cake flour. And here we're gonna do the three quarters of a cup of cornstarch. I use any kind of strainer. See, this has a few, the cornstarch has lumps. Yeah. See those lumps? So you wanna make sure you don't get those lumps Oh, that, look how nice this has gotten. So there's your six egg whites. Now six tablespoons of your same granulated sugar into the egg white. Keep mixing this until it's nice and glossy. So the egg whites act as the leavening for the cake itself. Instead of using a baking powder, we're using egg whites to lighten and, uh, and also cause the cake to rise in the pan. So look how pretty. Beautiful, not dry. Not Looks like whipped cream on this. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Now we're gonna fold the egg whites into the egg yolks. So do some, and I'll just use this to start to lighten the mixture. That's a great trick. Now you can do the flour this way too. Oh, cool. um, and I find that, but I always like to sift the flour over. So that's how you get your double sift. Yeah. And you also are just doing a little flour at a time. So you just sift this over. And I think now we've kept it very light and I will just use the rubber spatula to make sure every little bit is incorporated. Go to the bottom and then lightly, lightly lift. So now carefully distribute, look how much batter. Uh, I mean, this is, those, that's from those well-beaten eggs, beautifully incorporated. Uh, with the flour, with the dry ingredients. And it's light and airy, and it's gonna be filled with whipped cream and homemade raspberry jam. What could be bad? Do you ever use this one uh, for like a bouche de Noel, like for this Christmas? Is, this is exactly the cake that I use for my bouche de Noel. So see how nice and even this is? And this goes into a preheated 350 degree oven uh, for just about 20 minutes until a cake tester comes out clean. So now the exciting part. Very important, flour sack towels like this. You can buy these in cooking supply stores, sprinkled through a sieve with 10X sugar. Confectioner sugar is also known as 10X. And I think, oh yes, beautiful. Mm. Now don't over bake the cake. Uh, you want to make sure that the cake is no darker than that. And oh, this is coming away nicely from the edges. Mm, I think this is gonna be a great jelly roll. And I also put a little bit of sugar right on the top of the cake before I, before I roll it. Does that like also this. help with rolling or is that for no, flavor? No, it, but it helps with the flavor. It, it gives her a little bit of a sugary crunch mm. to the cake itself, uh, top and bottom of the cake, you'll see. Now, it's hot, so you want to just turn it over like this, bang. Oh, I think it came out. Oh, it did. Yeah, right out. It looks perfect. Oh. And look, the parchment stayed in the pan. And now sugar it again. Feels good. It feels soft, spongy. So now you roll. And does the heat help it roll? Is that why you do it right when it comes out of the oven? Yes. And hopefully without cracking. And uh, there. And keep the seam 
on the bottom. There, let that cool. We have one that came out of the oven a little while ago and it is already cool. Now watch. And the sugar also helps prevent the sticking. Look at this, look how fluffy and beautiful. Mmm, yummy. So for the filling, use about one and a half cups of heavy cream. And this is going to be a whipped cream flavored with homemade raspberry jam. Look at this raspberry jam. It's about maybe a third of a cup or so. And this will be very tasty. Mm, look how pretty. And again, buy really good cream. I'm always looking for the organic, of course. I think we have to do that for our kids or our own health. Okay, so here we have our whipped cream on our cooled cake. And go pretty much to the edges. Now roll this back up. See how nicely it rolls? Yeah. Look how pretty. And that this crust, this, this nice crackled crust is sugary. And that really helps with the taste. Now, a little trim would be good. Sometimes people do it on an angle, but I don't want to waste so much cake. So, and I'm not going to waste this anyway, because guess what? We're going, mm -hmm. to, we're going to eat this. Oh yeah. There, oh, it looks very pretty. With a serrated knife. Yeah, use a serrated knife. Use a large spatula to lift this onto my serving plate. Look how nice. That's been chilled for 30 minutes or so. It's, it's good to just let the filling set. If you want to keep your pretty serving platter clean, you just insert a little piece of wax paper all around the cake. And then now you can sprinkle to your heart's content. <laughs> I'll cut one slice. Use a cake server. Oh. My mother would be so proud. <laughs> Look at that. Fabulous. Nice little dollop of whipped cream on the side. And some pretty berries. So here's three forks. Let me know if it meets your expectation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Want to turn it? Go ahead. Mm. And the sugar on the outside, it kind of reminds you of a crinkle cookie. I know. That's, that's what I like yeah. about it. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I like about that sugar. So jelly rolls can be filled with all sorts of things. Believe me, you are going to enjoy and love this particular version, raspberries and cream. Once you've mastered the art of making a sponge cake, uh, you can then use that same batter for many different kinds of cakes. I've now created two nine inch layers and we're going to create a four layer, beautiful festive cake coated with one of my favorite frostings, a Swiss meringue caramel buttercream. Start with a heavy bottom saucepan and one and a quarter cups of granulated sugar and a half a cup of just room temperature water. And now cook it. So I just swirl like this and get the sugar all dissolved. Caramel is cooked until the color of your choice. The darker, the stronger the caramel. So it's over high heat. I cook over high heat, yeah. It's, it's faster, Right. <laughs> basically. It's just starting to come to a simmer. Oh, here it goes, it's boiling cover. And it'll take anywhere from three to six minutes to get the right amberness. I see a tiny little bit of sugar. I'll use my brush on this side. But see the steam on the top? Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna start dropping down, dissolving any extra granules of sugar. Okay, now it really is turning color. And uh, it's hard to see initially because of the bubbles. They look underneath the bubbles for the color. Okay, this is ready. Can you see? Mm. Smell the caramel? Yeah. Mm. It smells delicious. It smells good, right? Yeah. Okay, so don't let it sit in there too long. And immediately whisk in a half a cup of heavy cream and just stir it around. So this is our caramel. So now you just want to pour this right into the bowl. Look at that lovely consistency. Really yeah, it's great. Now this particular buttercream takes six sticks of butter. I find that whipping it first really helps when you add it to the egg whites and sugar mixture. And I'm just gonna use the paddle beater on this. Just make sure it's every single piece of butter is the same consistency. So there, that's all I have to do. I can just sit here and wait. Heat the nine large egg whites 
in the mixer bowl with three quarters of a teaspoon of salt and one cup of sugar. So now I'm going to heat the egg whites and uh, the sugar over simmering water to dissolve all that sugar. And you can use a wire whisk. Do not cook the egg whites, so be very careful. Egg whites have a tremendous amount of protein in them, and by heating the protein, uh, you are allowing them, the protein to relax, and then you'll get a more voluminous meringue. So now to test, just take a little bit between your fingers. There's no more greeniness. And now put this on your mixer. So this is going to take about 10 minutes. Add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. Oh, see how nice and thick it's getting? Mm -hmm. And so this has to be 100% cool. And the only way you're going to get it cool is by beating, 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 getting the air incorporated into the meringue. Now the butter has been all beaten up as I showed you before, and you're going to add it in small amounts to the meringue. That much will start actually the fabrication of the buttercream. And it can't be too warm and it can't be too cold because if it were too cold, it won't mix into the meringue. If it's too hot, it will just melt. And now you can add your caramel. And remember, the caramel has to be cool. High speed for about three minutes. Now, switch from the whisk to the flat beater. And while that's doing that, I'm going to start slicing the cakes. This cake, you want to slice in half using the biggest serrated knife you can find and trying to be as even as possible. A few little crumbs, not bad. There. Okay, I think we're ready to frost. Oh, it's so pretty. Want to taste? Yes. Yeah. A little taste. What do you think? I think it's fabulous. It's mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. Really good. Really creamy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it's very nice to have a cake stand with a revolving top is very, very good. So use the bottom layer on your cardboard. Put a little bit of frosting right here to keep your cake from slip sliding away. And now you can turn that and it won't go little anchor. Yeah. We're going to do a crumb coat first, and then you can do your apply your final coat, which will have no crumbs in it whatsoever. So start applying the frosting. Use an offset spatula like this. Get the frosting um, approximately the same thickness between all the layers. So this recipe makes about seven cups of icing. So about a cup between the layers. And then any unevenness on the sides can be remedied with the frosting itself. Can you remember that? It's going to be on your next exam. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're going to take the frosting down the sides. And I like to do this too, because I like to stick one of these right down to the cardboard. And that way I'm pretty sure the cake's not going to slide. Mm. Okay, so you see the idea is to get mm -hmm. it as basically smooth as possible into the fridge. Use this big spatula to do this. 30 minutes. So now here's the crumb coated cake. In the refrigerator, the frosting actually darkened a lot. That's the butterscotch, that's the caramel coming through the buttercream. But now we're going to just do our finished coat and spread your frosting. You should have about two and a half cups of frosting left to decorate the cake. And you can now remove your skewer so it doesn't get in your way. Now, if your frosting has gotten at all, I mean, too soft, you, you know, you, you'll see it, it's too soft, just put the whole thing in a bowl of ice water and just chill it a little bit. Keep stirring it until you feel it uh, start to thicken again. See why you want a, t a turntable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just hold your spatula perpendicular. And then if you see any unevenness on the top, and you want to make it as flat as possible. Now clean up your excess here just by holding your spatula like that. Now to 
make it look a little bit more professional, you can comb the cake. Just hold this, again, perpendicular to your cake, and comb your cake. Really cool effect. Try to hold the comb perpendicular. So there, chill it and serve it. I think everyone is going to enjoy this cake a lot. So for yet another variation on the universal sponge cake, lady fingers. And the lady fingers are the basis for a delicious tiramisu ice cream cake. How would you like to learn to make that? It's fun, love right? Jess. Do you like tiramisu? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, I love espresso coffee. It's nice and sweet. And I love coffee ice cream and vanilla ice cream. And all of those things are incorporated in this spectacular dessert. So first is the way to make ladyfingers. And homemade ladyfingers are really, really so much better. These are the real biscuit that they talk about in cookbooks and in French history. And notice that they're hard and, and but crispy and tender at the same time. So I like them all to be a uniform size. So I'm marking my parchment paper with three inch lines and Use a big ruler like this just to get them at least straight. And then I don't like to cook on top of pencils, so I turn this over. And there you have the marks you can see through the parchment. We start with half a recipe, so three eggs separated. And we can start beating the egg yolks with six tablespoons of granulated sugar. This can just beat up until it's nice and fluffy. Now. Six tablespoons of cornstarch and six tablespoons of all-purpose unbleached flour. And just sift through. Okay, the egg yolks seem to be nicely mixed. Add three quarters of a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, so remember the little trick of using the beater for the sponge? Just stir it around and just keep the beater right in there. Okay, now clean bowl, three egg whites. And eighth of a teaspoon of salt and three tablespoons of sugar. And let this get silky smooth and fluffy. And we're going to mix the egg whites into the egg yolks. So now we have the egg whites incorporated. And now sprinkle your dry ingredients. So there, we're ready to fill our bag. Just remember to keep this nice cuff on the top so that you keep the outside of the bag clean. So this is going to make 30, 15 on each tray. And now they should go right into a preheated 400 degree oven. And these stay in the oven for 11 to 13 minutes. So here they are. Look how pretty. Let them cool a little bit and we can start assembling the tiramisu ice cream cake. First, we have to make a simple syrup two and a half tablespoons of water, and a quarter of a cup of sugar. And let that just dissolve over heat. I think that's hot enough. And then add your coffee, which is already pre-measured, six tablespoons, and two teaspoons of lovely coffee liqueur. So this is our mold, it's a, a regular bread pan and line it with plastic wrap. Very important for the unmolding process. So, and we have homemade vanilla ice cream. We need three cups in the bottom. And use your little spatula to just mush it down. And the next layer is 15 of the lady fingers. And you can use a brush to brush the parts of the biscuit that you have missed with the coffee. Now the next layer should be the coffee ice cream. And the coffee ice cream will make it really rich espresso ice cream. Do you like making ice cream? Yeah. Yeah. It's so much healthier too when you make it yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And then you're kind of forced to eat it because it all uh, goes bad within a week, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> forced. No excuse forced. To eat it. <laughs> I don't have any problem with that in my house with the kids. I'm lucky if I get any. Right. And 15 more of our lady fingers. Really press down because you want a nice loaf when you unmold this delectable dessert. And now a little bit more vanilla ice cream. Coffee, chocolate. Those are the traditional flavors of a tiramisu. Okay. And now wrap this up. And this goes right back into the freezer for at least five hours or better yet overnight. And serve it tomorrow for your dinner party. See, easy, mm -hmm. very easy. And it's special. It is yeah, special. Definitely. So I'm unwrapping our tiramisu ice cream cake. Fold back the plastic wrap. And I just happen to have a dish that's pretty much the right size. There. Oh, uh, Yay! There it is. See? Perfect. Now peel off your plastic wrap. Make sure you get all of it. <laughs> Nobody wants a mouthful of plastic. And we're going to cover the whole thing with Swiss meringue, which is egg white seeded with sugar, beaten to a giant froth, flavored with vanilla, or you know, coffee liqueur, and just swirl it. Can you guys see? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How beautiful this looks. Yeah. Swirl it around, and more on top than on the sides. So pretty, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay. So now, so now just flame your meringue. What this does is highlight the meringue. Now don't concentrate in any one spot. You'll melt your ice cream. Word of caution. Now, I would put this back in the freezer because I know you're dying to taste it. I'm going to cut you a piece. So to slice, I like a heated knife to cut through the ice cream. And mm. and so here, three spoons, one slice. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Thank Go. You. So good. Mm. Does it taste good? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I do hope that this show, all about sponge cake, inspires you to try out some of your favorite taste combinations. And it really is a great base for so many delicious desserts. Enjoy. Begin with a triangle. Roll into a cone shape and tighten to form a point. Secure with a piece of tape. Fold remaining parchment into the cone and tear a small notch. Folding the parchment in the opposite direction will further secure it. Fill the cone with chocolate and fold over the top to seal. Snip the tip of the cone. Now you're ready to begin writing.